Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melder Production, and today I'm going to be going over part two of the acoustic bass stuff in M Sound Factory. So last time I left you with this. So we're going to work and try to improve that a little bit. One thing I might want to do at the beginning is, I think this may be a little bit too bright. So what I might try to do is just go in here up to a thousand, bring that down just a little bit. And I'm not sure, well, I guess I can leave that there. Bring this down a little bit lower. That seems a little bit better. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of uh, high pass filter on the bass sound because I feel it's a little bit, uh, you know, it has a little bit too much high end. So actually let me mute this first so we can just hear the bass. Hear that, har that harsh attack. I wanna kinda get rid of that. I'll show you what I did in the other one. So this is the one that I made before. I have a bandpass filter here. So all I'm doing is with the high pass, I'm cutting out just everything that's uh, you know lower than the natural frequency or the uh, main frequency. So I don't have any low end rumble when I don't want it. And if you saw in the last one, when I showed you the resonator, when you add this all pass, this actually does add uh, kind of like rumbling at the bottom around this frequency. So adding this will get rid of that. And for the low pass, all I'm doing is I'm starting here at 250, and I have it going up to 1,700 or 1,474 hertz. But it's uh, being transformed by the key scaling here. So I have the key scale modulator here, and I'm using a transform. So this would be the lowest note. You see it's there, and the higher notes. So it's just moving and changing the amount of, uh, or the frequency of the high pass filter depending on which key I'm hitting, which is what I want. Now I could try to, you know, do everything and uh, copy this, but easier way to do this is just hit copy, go back by using this AB, here's our main version, make sure I put it before the mixer, paste, everything should be in here and it should be exactly the same. Sounds pretty good. Let's add back in the, uh, the slap. Now you can turn this up or down if you want. So if I want more, I just I think that's too much. Maybe. Sounding pretty good. The next thing we're gonna add is the oscillator shaper. And you're thinking, what is this gonna do? This is gonna add almost like a compression to it. So I have the oscillator shaper here. I'm gonna turn the volume down because this can get a little bit loud. If you leave it like this, where it has the saw shape, it's not gonna sound like much. We wanna change it to sine. Now listen to it. Now you can leave it up there. Let me let you hear before and after off. So you can hear more of the note. And of course, you can set this however you want. If you think, ah, it's a little bit too much, turn the input value down, maybe like this. I think for me, this is sounding pretty good. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure this sounds more like a bass. You're thinking, eh, you know, like the sound isn't exactly correct. Maybe, uh, for example, it needs the lows cut or the mids cut or whatever. What we're going to do is we're going to actually analyze an actual bass sound here. So I have this around the track here. That's a sample from uh, a real bass. So you can get that from wherever you want to get that from. But uh, if you can get one. That'll help you. What we're going to do now is use M Freeform Equalizer. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a sample of this so we can get the frequency spectrum. And then we're going to get a frequency spectrum of what we have in M Sound Factory. So first hit Analyze, and then we hit Play to get the sample's frequency spectrum. 
So this red line should be the sample's frequency spectrum. It's not always perfect, but it should be pretty close. Next, I will hit find the same note. Oh, another thing you'll probably notice, hey, there's kind of a delay when you hit the notes. Make sure you have this on minimum phase so there's no latency. Make sure it's the same note as the um, note from the sample. Should be pretty close. Now hit analyze. There we go. We don't need the smoothness exactly there, so it's like a 5%. This will give us maybe a little bit too many bumps, which we don't really want. So I like to move it up to 10%, but of course experiment. And now hit equalize. Okay. Now you see all this up here. We probably don't need that. We want this to have a little bit more treble than it has normally, but not this much. So let's start moving this down. You can kind of draw this however you want, but I like to move it down here. We don't need that much. There we go. And now if you notice you play, you can barely hear it. Turn the output out, output up to match it. That's not better. Let's hear with it off. On. Off. Now, I could move it down more. I think, eh, you know what? This is a little bit too much. Move it down more here. I'll probably have to move down the slap or decrease the slapping sounds volume, but overall, I think this is nice. Uh, if you want it differently, of course, you can draw this and make it however you want. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually export this as an IR. So we have the IR button here once you pull this out from the toolbar. And then we save it wherever we want. So I have this called Acoustic Bass, and we'll just call this uh, Video Test. Click OK. So now we have that. We don't really need this freeform EQ anymore. What we're going to do is open this back up, and now we're going to go into the FX section. Uh, I should turn this down a little bit so it doesn't clip. There we go. And we're going to use M cabinet in the EQ and filters. This is the cabinet. We have it. I right, turn off R1 because I don't really need that. I'll pop it out so I can make it a little bit larger. And the IR we just made, we're going to load it in here. So analyze IR. We have this one, video test. So now you see what it looks like. Might need to turn this down too. Let's test it. That uh, slap is bothering me. I'm going to turn it back down, maybe negative 12. But you can, of course, leave that wherever you like. If you want more, you can. Now we get back into M cabinet. We have this basic shape. If you like this, you great. If you don't, of course, change it. And from here, we can add other things to it. So let's say we want this to be not so smooth. Go into Resonator 1. We have this, it's stereo. I don't really need that here. And you can use whichever one of these you like. I think maybe try, eh, that's a bit too much. This is good, turn the character down. And then from here, I think I don't want all these resonances in the bass. So all I do is set the crossover as 400, try decay, let's try 400% so you don't really hear it there, or maybe there. It's around 200, so frequency about there. And then here, I can raise this if I want. Let's listen to it. And this is pretty good, but let's just try one more thing. Go to the widener here, and what we can do is we can do the almost the exact same thing. If I let you hear the depth now with 100%, it sounds like this. Now that's starting to sound more like an acoustic bass. One of the things though is sometimes you don't want so much high end, so we can go in here and you can do the same thing now. So this is kind of a new feature. Uh, it should be in the newest uh, beta if you haven't had that for the, what is this, 5 or 15. Uh, so check that out if you haven't. And from here, what we can do is we can look at the red and white there. We can move this up and down. Actually, make sure it's not on 20,000. Let's try this around 1,000 or so. Move it down.
do the same thing with the bass if we want. See, you don't want to go too high with that. But let's say I don't want anything under around like 100 or so. So I can have it here. But of course, you may not want the depth at 100. Let's try moving it down maybe around like 40 or so. And if you don't want it to be stereo, you can move the widening down like this. Etc. So that way you can get exactly what you want. So to me, this is sounding pretty good. I actually don't want it completely. Oh, I want a little bit of widening there. Maybe not that much, but that seems good. And from here, you can do other things. And uh, for some reason, this part is really bothering me here. This frequency, how it's set up with the attack. I have the velocity here. I might want to actually do a transform. I can do the transform here, or actually, I'll do it here inside the velocity. So that way, it's a little bit less unless I hit it really hard. Even a little bit more. Add another dot in here. Move this even farther down. Like this. Etc. So that's the things you can do. I actually uh, have some other ones that I used for, or other profiles, EQ profiles I used for a different, uh, uh, was it device? I'll let you hear those too. So this is just to show you can have multiples of them and you can have all sorts of different sounds so like this one. Or this. That's maybe a little bit too scooped. That may not work for this device. I think that one sounds pretty good. Yeah, let's try the last one. A little bit too trebly, but of course, you can make as many of these as you want. You can alter these however you want, and you can make your own. So that way, if, for example, you think, ah, eh, this isn't quite right, Make something that sounds good for your instrument. And hopefully you can use this for other things too. Maybe if you want to make a cello sound or some other instrument, you could use this exact same idea. Hopefully this gave you an idea of how to make the acoustic bass. And hopefully I will actually have this device finished soon that I showed you here. Uh, and hopefully this will be included so you'll have an acoustic bass sound. So if there's anything else you want me to change about this, let me know and I'll uh, do that before. But if you have any questions, leave those down below. Give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at meldeproduction.com. Till next time, see you.